What uh, uh, has characterized, uh, to, according to some, Latino politics in New York, at least, has been a focus on insular issues. Uh, and by that, I mean, for example, the coalitions have been the black and Puerto Rican caucus, the Puerto Rican Latino and black caucus, the Puerto Rican Dominican and black caucus. Um, and for example, not the fair housing or affordable housing caucus or the full employment caucus. Uh, to what extent does that play into the, their, their lack of citywide presence and, and credibility? But I, I think that that's actually shifting because if you look at the progressive caucus that was initiated in the city council, who's at the forefront of that? Melissa Marviverito. You look at some of the young people, mm -hmm. uh, younger generation folks who have come up, Idanis Rodriguez or Julissa Ferreras in Queens, and they're they're sending a different message. They're looking broadly. They're looking at working class issues and they're looking at multiracial coalitions. So I, I think that that's always been uh, there's always been a thread there, and and there's always been this model of just like sort of. And it's generational, I think, frankly, you know. Roberto. To add, a, a lot of the, for example, uh, Erica mentions a progressive caucus. Uh, a lot of these conversations have to begin from the bottom up. Uh, we can't always rely on elected officials who are, unfortunately, and for the most part, looking to protect their own interests mm -hmm. to start movements. So the progressive caucus is also a byproduct of community groups of labor unions, of progressive labor unions that are, for example, WFP. Uh, the Working, they, families, the working party. families Party. Uh, they're advocating for paid sick leave, paid sick days for, for people. They're also advocating for a progressive tax, you know, tax on uh, people making over $250,000. Uh, they're uh, support of affordable housing and uh, the Erstat law and, and reversing that. So it, it's also it's a conversation where people uh, get involved in the campaigns of electing these individuals and then in turn turn around. Well, we helped you get into office. Now we have to work for the people, not for yourselves, but for the people. What a David, concept. Let, let me add that, that um, uh, to what Alberto was saying, that um, this is not only a time to look at the leadership with respect to elected officials, um, but also um, there was a time where Hispanic fraternal organizations among all of the municipal workers were really yes. power horse organizations. Yes. So my question is, because we have an opportunity here to sort of evaluate and, and, and reconfigure and retool, is, is what's, what are those organizations doing? You know, this is, you're talk, talking about Hispanic organizations that exist across the board for municipal workers, you know. And then also this question of caucuses. What are the caucuses within the council, the assembly, and the senate really doing? What, are, what, was, what was their aim and what are they accomplishing? I'm not sure that the leverage is, is, is being used to the, for our community. 